All right, here we go. My very last video of 2020 and my chance to look back at the best and worst new bikes and products that I've ridden in the past 12 months. Now it's been a crazy, crazy year, but despite everything that's going on, the bike industry hasn't slowed up with its release of new bikes and products. So plenty to talk about and plenty for me to ride. So in this video, I'm gonna pick my best road bike, my best gravel bike, my best mountain bike, my best e-bike, best new product, worst new product, best new tech trend, and worst new tech trend. So plenty to dive into. I'll put links down below in the description so you can skip ahead if you want, or you can sit back and watch the entire video. And I invite you at this stage in the video to let me know what you think of my selection down in the comment section below. And if there are products you think should be in this list or new bikes or products that really stand out for you, then make sure you add them down below. It'd be fascinating to see what you think. But everything in this video is based on what I've been riding this year. And I know there are a few notable admissions, but hopefully I'll ride those in the new year. But for now, here are my best and worst new products of 2020. Let's dive in. Let's start with the best new road bike of 2020. And I'm grouping together all drop bar road bikes here. So endurance, aero, and general road race bikes. And for me, there's one clear winner, the giant TCR Advance Pro One Disc. Just a great overall complete package, great handling, ride quality, stiff and lightweight, good looking and great value for money with a full carbon frame, carbon wheels, and a dual sided power meter on the Ultegra mechanical group set. And despite the recent price increases, it's still a really good value for money when you compare it to rivals from Trek and Specialized and others. And while I'm mentioning one model in the range here, it's worth adding that the entire giant TZR Advance range share the same fundamental frame design, just different equipment and carbon fiber layout, depending on where your budget, from the entry level right up to top end SL models. So a general award for the entire TCR family here, but the Pro One Disc gets my mark of approval for just everything you want in a performance road race bike. So a giant TCR easily wins this award, but there are some honorable mentions. So first and foremost, it's that stunning, but really expensive, specialized S-Works Athos I rode earlier this year. A timely reminder that while aero and stiffness to weight ratio are all very good for performance and winning races, that ride quality is what really matters when we're all seeking a new road bike. And the ride quality of that bike is simply superb. It's not the first type of bike in this category. There are many other brands doing this style of bike, but I see a big brand like Specialized putting all its attention into a bike and not designed for winning races, it's very refreshing. So that is definitely a worthy mention here. For value for money, it's hard to beat the Merida Reacto, offering a really fast aero frame with great design internal cable routing and all for a killer price tag. So that's definitely worth mentioning here. And my last honorable mention goes to not a carbon fiber bike, but a bike that reminds us that aluminum is still a really good choice for a road race bike. With the Bowman Palace 3 offering a superb ride quality, a low weight, good equipment for the money and a good looking frame as well. So just a really nice all round package. That proves you don't need carbon if you wanna ride fast or ride far. On to best gravel bike of 2020. And here judging gets more tricky because we've seen so many new bikes launch into this wildly popular category. But really there's one standout winner, the Specialized S-Works Diverge. And there are two features on this Diverge platform, the third generation model that really stood out for me and made it a clear winner in this category. The Future Shock and the SWAT storage in the down tube. Now they might seem like gimmicks, but that future shock in the head tube offers 20 millimeters of bump absorbing suspension and really provides a smoother ride and a faster ride over rough gravel and dirt tracks. And then that down tube storage underneath the bottle cage is a stroke of genius. Put all your tools and other essentials in there so they're out of the way, out of the mud, no rattling, just a really smart use of that big down tube uh, for storing all your tools rather than your jersey pockets or underneath the saddle in a saddle bag. So I love to see other manufacturers embracing this idea. Perfect for off-road bikes like the Diverge. But also great handling from that mountain bike inspired geometry with a longer front center and a shorter stem, big tire clearance, lots of mounts for boss cages and other accessories. Just a really complete package that offers everything that I think most people want from a gravel bike. Good on the road, 
good off-road, good comfort, very fast and lightweight and available at a wide range of prices as well as the S-Work trim here is a little bit too pricey for you. So that's my clear standout winner for the best gravel bike of 2020. But again, a few honorable mentions. One has to go to, of course, the Canyon Grail CFSL I rode earlier this year. Despite looking very odd with its hover handlebar, it's a supremely fast and reasonably smooth off-road gravel bike that is great value for money. And then also the 3T Explorer Race Max. I was hugely impressed with the previous generation Explorer, which is still available, but the new version with improved tire clearance and even better aerodynamics, even if you don't think aero matters on a gravel, because it does if you're going fast off-road, this new version, based on just a couple of rides so far, is deeply impressive and definitely another contender for best gravel bike of 2020. On to best mountain bike of 2020, and this really reflects the type of riding I like, which is a short travel trail bike designed to be fast everywhere, up, down, and across country. And for me, the one clear winner, the YT Izzo. Just great value for money from the direct sales brand, full carbon frame and swing arm, great components for the money, a great suspension, really efficient, climbs really well, even without the remote lockout, big 29 inch wheels, short travel, just a really good package for riding fast everywhere up, down, across, just such a good bike, I nearly bought it. So that's my clear winner for 2020. A few honorable mentions in this category. And firstly, the Yeti SB115, link above if you missed that review the other day. Superb bike, great performance, great suspension, really the best suspension on any mountain bike I've ridden this year. Great looking bike as well, great prestige and history. Quite pricey and the geometry is not as on trend as it could be compared to that YT ISO. And that's the one thing that held it back from winning the best mountain bike of 2020. There's also the Canyon Lux, which I rode earlier this year. So a short travel, cross country, race focused bike. Again, the geometry isn't as progressive as it could be, but super fast, super efficient suspension, a super lightweight and super value for money. So definitely a worthy bike if you like riding fast everywhere. And one bike I didn't get to ride, but it's definitely worth mentioning, is the Transition Spur, which for me uh, sums up this category of short travel, cross country trail bike really nicely with progressive geometry, big wheels, really smart, clean looking frame. And that's a bike I can't wait to ride in 2021, see if it's as good as the YT Izzo and others in this category. Now the best e-bike of 2020. A fast growing category, loads of manufacturers are jumping on the e-bike bandwagon. I've ridden everything from mountain bike hardtails to drop bar road bikes. But for me, the clear winner in this category was a Marin Alpine Trail. Just a bike that puts a smile on your face, hugely fun, makes the best of mountain bike and e-bike technology in a package that's all about having fun. Uh, really is the future of mountain bikes, I think. You've got the motor for going up the hills, You've got the geometry and the components on the bike for having fun going back down. Just a really uh, compelling package if you like riding mountain bikes for fun. Uh, not necessarily speed or distance, but just uh, having as much fun as you can on a mountain bike. Honorable mention must go to another e-bike and the Specialized Turbo Vader SL. Just a smart, integrated transport solution for commuting, getting around town, uh, mud guards, lights connected to the motor, just a really smart vision of the future where e-bikes can be reutilized to their best uh, potential for commuting uh, as a replacement for the car. That is a really exciting um, proposition. From bikes to best new product of 2020, and we've had a lot of new products launched this year, but there's one surprise hit of 2020, and it is a brand new gravel bike group set, Eckhart 1x13 setup. Very few people saw this coming, at least not me, but probably the most impressive new launch from the Italian company. And not a half-baked road bike group set modified for gravel, but they cleared done the homework and designed from scratch a brand new group set that meets the requirements and demands of gravel bike riding right now. So one by for simplicity and a choice of three 13 speaker sets with a really smart ratio setup that works really well in the varying terrain and requirements of gravel cycling from high-speed road to low speed gravel. Uh, works really well, mechanical shifting, so it's simple and reliable, very powerful hydraulic disc brakes. It looks good. It's a little bit pricey, but hopefully the price will come down 
and there'll be a cheaper alternative. But for best new products, it's easily the Echo group set. Now, a few other honorable mentions. Best new innovation has to be 3D printed saddles, in particular, the specialized power mirror saddle I tested earlier this year. A few honorable mentions here, and best innovation goes to 3D printed saddles. We had two this year, one from Physique and one from Specialized. And it's a Specialized Power Mirror Saddle that really did it for me. A really exciting use of this future technology, offering tangible benefits over current saddle technology, a supreme comfort, just a stunning comfort from this odd looking saddle, and potentially even better benefits for all of us in the future, custom printed saddles could be a possible use of this technology. So a really exciting glimpse into the future, but now it's still very expensive, but if you can afford it, a supreme comfort. I was very impressed by Zip's brand new line of wheels with a 303S, which cost a thousand pounds, the first time the company had made a wheel set at this really competitive price point, and also their brand new 303 Firecrest wheels. But for me, it's the 1,000 pound 303S wheels that really hit the mark. Uh, great performance, really wide profile rim, hookless, tubeless only, designed for low pressures. Just a really reliable, solid aero wheel set and a real rival to less well-known brands at this price point with a lifelong warranty as well. So really lots of like here, really solid wheel set from the company. And then from Shimano, their mountain bike Dior 12 speed group set. Basically the best mountain bike groups that you can buy at the moment bring all their technology and expertise from their top level XTR group set to a very affordable price point, like four or 500 pounds for a complete group set, brakes, gears, 12 speed wide range cassettes, uh, super reliable, just everything you want in a mountain bike group set. And they finally caught up with SRAM in the one by market. So uh, yeah, top marks to Shimano for their new Dior group set. Now it's time for the worst new bike or product of 2020. I've got two here. The first is the 10,000 euro BMC Masterpiece frame set. Not so much for the bike, but for the marketing approach taken by the company, offering very few details about the frame, about how it's made. Turns out it's made in Germany, one per day. Um, some very fluffy PR words, a lot of marketing stuff going on, not enough actual substance, which is a real shame because I think the product's actually genuinely good, just that's hidden behind a layer of PR. So the BMC Masterpiece is one, not necessarily a bad product, but a bad launch. And the other is the Specialized Hot Walk Carbon, a 1,000 pound carbon fiber balance bike. Probably the bike that nobody asked for, but Specialized made it. I'm sure they sell loads, but do we really need 1,000 pound carbon fiber balance bikes? Has the world gone mad? Um, does seem like it. So that is the, not necessarily the worst product, but the worst release of the year. Um, but have I ridden a really bad bike or product this year? Well, to be honest, I'm not just saying this because I'm in the pocket of the industry or something like that. I haven't actually ridden any really bad bikes this year. All the bikes I've ridden have been really good. Great performance, uh, some of them exceptional value for money. Uh, I haven't had any product failures this year, touch wood. So it's not been a bad year for me in terms of riding bad products. Okay, nearly at the end of the awards and time for the best tech trend and the worst tech trend of 2020. So not an actual product as such, but a trend that we're seeing inside the industry. And probably the best tech trend in the road bike market at the moment is the move to fully internal cable routing that we're seeing on top end bikes. Now it is a double edged sword. There are downsides to internal cable routing, but generally it perceived to be a better thing, a modern thing. And we're seeing lots of people buying bikes based on the cable routing. And even though my head says they're always the best solution, my heart says a bike with full internal cable routing looks really clean, really modern, um, possibly easily, arguably the future of the modern road race bike, full internal cable routing. And then without doubt, the worst trend of 2020 is the rising bike prices. So yes, bike prices are going up. So a number of reasons why bike prices are going up, currency, shipping costs, Brexit, supply and demand. I went through a few reasons in my video linked above if you missed that. But whatever reasons, prices are going up and I only set to go up next year. So if you're in the market for buying a bike, my advice is to buy a bike when you get one because you either can't get hold of one or if you can, the price is gonna go up. So buy a bike while you get a chance. So rising bike prices are the worst trend of 2020. So there we go then, my best and worst new bikes and products of 2020. 
And of course, it goes without saying, this list is entirely subjective and it's based on the bikes I've ridden this year and the products I've been using this year. Now it's time to hand it over to you, for you to let me know what you think of my list, my bikes and products. If you disagree, agree, or what bikes and products you put in each of your categories, put them down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on each of your categories uh, down below. So make sure you get typing and let's hear what your bikes and products of the past year are. Okay, that's all for now. I'll see you in 2021 for more bike reviews, more product reviews from road, gravel, and mountain bike on this channel. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the like button, enjoy watching it. Follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes. And with all that said, just leave me to say, thank you so much for watching. See you all next year.